Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tehani Issa, professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We will talk about congenital syphilis. So what is the mode of transmission of congenital syphilis? You know that congenital syphilis occurs when treponema pallidum cross the placenta from an infected mother to the fetus. And maternal transmission happens most frequently during the primary or secondary stage of syphilis, when the spirochetes are most numerous. Congenital syphilis may also occur due to passage of the fetus through infected birth canal. So it may occur due to transmission of the organisms through the placenta or during the passage of the fetus through infected birth canal. Because manifestations of maternal syphilis may be subtle, routine serological testing for, the, for syphilis is mandatory in all pregnancies. You know the chance of a mother passing syphilis into her newborn baby is uh, 80%. So it is mandatory for all pregnant females to do serological tests for syphilis. Congenital syphilis rates continue skyrocketing alongside other sexually transmitted diseases. See here in uh, 2017, 37 um, states reported at least one case of congenital syphilis. And the five states, these five states report for 70% of cases according to U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Newborn syphilis incidence has more than doubled from 2013 to 2017. In 2013, you can see uh, 362 cases, while it becomes 900 18 cases in 2017, and this result in 64 syphilitic stillbirths and 13 infant deaths that year, according to data published in Sexually Transmitted Disease Surveillance 2017. Syphilitic infection of the mother may give rise to miscarriage or premature birth or stillbirth or death of newborn baby or baby with early or late manifestations of congenital syphilis. Intrauterine death and perinatal death each occur in approximately 25% of cases of untreated congenital syphilis. What are the manifestations of congenital syphilis? Manifestations of congenital syphilis are divided into early or infantile manifestations, which occur in the first two years of life, and late manifestations or tardive manifestations, which occur after two years of life. Early manifestations of congenital syphilis. In uh, early cases, you can see this mucoperulant or blood-stained nasal discharge causing snuffles. You can see this in the first few months of life and usually accompanied by skin rash, uh, especially disquamating or bolus rash with sloughing of the skin, particularly of the hands and the feet and around the mouth and the anus. And you should know that rash in congenital syphilis is more severe than that of the secondary stage of acquired syphilis. Here you can see this squamating eruption that was widespread in all parts of the body, particularly at the sole of the foot. And here you can see vesiculobolus rash widespread in all parts of the body. Here, vesiculobolus rash on the palm, and face, and axilla of infant with congenital syphilis. In fact, the dermatological changes of um, dermatological changes of congenital syphilis are so variable that this is called uh, the great imitator because it gives rise to um, various types of uh, rash in uh, in congenital infected babies. Uh, but usually the, uh, with affection of the palm and sole of the feet, the palm, sole of the feet, and the oral area around the, the mouth and the anogenital region are usually affected. This is erythematous rash prominent on the patient's palmar surface of the hand. And this is macules with erythematous halo. This you can see in the hand and the sole of the feet. You know great variation in the types of rash 
flesh. This is disquamation on the palm and the sole of the feet. And if you see disquamation on the palm and sole with no other rash, with no rash or disquamation elsewhere in the body, it is very suggestive of congenital syphilis. Here you can see this bolus rash. Here is cercinate lesion, and this sometimes cephalitic crash takes the form of pemphigus, and we call it cephalitic pemphigus or pemphigus cephaliticus. Uh, here is, uh, it, you can see on the sole uh, of the foot of an infant with congenital syphilis. Uh, this baby, you, you see this baby with these snuffles, has also another lesion here. Here you can see around the mouth, this is called rajad. You know, at the mucocutaneous junction, lesions tend to weep and may cause these fissures or chelitis, which often extend from the lips in a radiating fashion over the surrounding skin. And when deep enough, it forms a scar, and because of healing, it causes cause scar, and this is called rajads. Rajads occur around the mouth and also around the anus. This is another case you can see these rajads around the mouth, these fissures. And here also another case of rajads. And this particular baby, you know, in, uh, in, in each baby you might find numerous findings, so many findings of congenital syphilis. This baby with these rajads had also uh, hepatospelinomegaly. Uh, the large enla enlargement of the liver and the spleen. Hepatomegaly occurs in 50 to 60 percent of affected infants, and it is frequently associated with jaundice, anemia, splenomegaly, and ascites. This baby has jaundice, anemia, splenomegaly, and ascites. Go to the uh, lesions uh, of uh, skeletal uh, tissue, the bones. The pathognomonic lesion in the first six months of life is syphilitic osteochondritis, and it is usually accompanied by periosteitis. These lesions tend to have symmetrical distribution, but vary in extent and vary in density. Here you can see this uh, osteochondritis. It usually involves the, in severe cases, um, it usually involves the proximal ends or the growing ends of the long bones. Sometimes it is so severe that it causes metaphysial fractures. Here you can see enlargement of the epiphyseal ends of bone. See how enlarged the epiphyseal end of the bone and broadening and irregularity of the epiphyseal line. And you may also see irregularity and sclerosis of the provisional uh, areas of calcification. It is called sawtooth metastasis. Uh, regular areas of osteoporosis is seen in, usually in the metaphysis. You can see this regular area uh, of osteoporosis. Here you can see uh, more periosteitis. Here you can see more osteochondritis, but here there is more periosteitis. The osteochondritis gave rise to characteristic lesion is called Wimberger sign. Wimberger sign is this lytic lesion in the um, upper ends of the medial surface of the tibia. On both sides, see this lytic lesion on both sides of the proximal tibia. In the medial aspect, this area, this lytic lesion is called Wimberger sign, is pathognomonic for congenital syphilis. Here you will appreciate it more. Here, see this, can see you, it is beautiful. This Wimberger sign, this lytic uh, areas on the medial side of, um, uh, of upper tibia. Here, very beautiful, this Wimberger sign. Here also, Wimberger sign, I want you to use to it, here in the uh, medial side of both tibias, or proximal tibia, here you can see at the two arrows here. And this single arrow uh, points to the, scler the um, for me, periosteitis and the formation of uh, new bone. 
Usually, the syphilitic infant complain of pain in both tibia and bilateral tenderness. This infant complained of pain and bilateral tenderness at both ends at both tibia, at the upper ends of both tibia, and also uh, at lower ends of both radii. And this infant refused to move. When the infant had pain, he refused to move, and we call this parrot pseudo paralysis. In the second six months of life, the evidence of periosteal reaction tended to become more intense. So we can find more um, periosteal reaction and starting a newborn formation. And this gave rise to a successive layers of newborn let down under the periosteum. And this is what we call onion peel periosteum. This is summarized the early manifestation of the of uh, congenital syphilis, snuffles, the muco, uh, muco uh, papular rash or disquamating rash, uh, vesiculopapular rash, and uh, you may see any of the changes of the secondary stage of syphilis in the early congenital syphilis. You may see condyloma latum. Uh, you may see also mucus patches. But you, uh, there is also uh, affection of the lung by pneumonia. This is very important in the early manifestations of congenital syphilis. You may see generalized lymphadenopathy, jaundice, and anemia. And a few infants develop meningitis, choroiditis, hydrocephalus, seizures, and they are uh, intellectually disabled, and there is also failure to thrive. Late manifestations of congenital syphilis occur after two years of life, up to 30 years. Hatchison teeth are small incisors, widely spaced, shaped like a screwdriver or like a bag, with notches on the inferior on, in the enamel. This notch in the inferior surface, like this, is small, widely spaced, uh, shaped like a screwdriver or a bag, and with notch in the enamel. Very beautiful. This Hatchison teeth. Uh, Dr. Hatchson des described these teeth, and so we call it Hatchson teeth. And he also described this interstitial keratitis. You know, interstitial keratitis means interstitial means inflammation be in between the uh, cells. Interstitial means in the connective tissue of the cornea. Interstitial keratitis means inflammation of the connective tissue of the cornea. You know, the cornea consists of stratified squamous epithelium and uh, the uh, then connective tissue. You know, the basement membrane and then connective tissue and then the endothelium. And between the epithelium and the endothelium, this connective Connective tissue is inflamed, cause interstitial keratitis, and this leads to blindness. In addition to interstitial keratitis, the ocular changes include choroiditis and the abnormal retinal pigmentation. Interstitial keratitis is unusual in, to occur before the age of five in cases of congenital syphilis. It is usually after the age of five. So this is interstitial keratitis. And um, in this particular case, it occurs in uh, a patient 20 years old. And this patient had been aware of eye problem for a number of years. This interstitial keratitis and the Hutchison teeth, this is Hutchison teeth and this interstitial keratitis, together with affection of the eighth nerve, which give rise to eighth nerve deafness. Eighth nerve deafness occur um, due to uh, meningovascular syphilis, because you can see also manifestations of meningovascular syphilis. So the three uh, um, these three changes occur as a late manifestation of congenital syphilis and are described by Dr. Hatchison, and uh, that's why we call it Hatchison's triad. So Hatchison triad consists of Hatchison teeth, interstitial keratitis, and eighth nerve deafness. 
Syphilitic osteochondritis and periosteitis affect all bones, but lesions of the nose and lower leg are most distinctive, most prominent, because destruction of the vomer causes collapse of the bridge of the nose, and later it gives rise to characteristic lesion called saddle nose deformity. This is saddle nose. This is saddle nose due to destruction of the vomer, and this occurs due to gamma. Gamma destroys the uh, the the vomer, and this gives this deformity, which is called saddle nose deformity. You know, in the late manifestations of congenital syphilis, you may find the ch uh, changes similar to the tertiary stage of acquired syphilis. You may find meningovascular syphilis. You may find cardiovascular syphilis. Uh, besides these lesions, but these these lesions, saddle nose, Hutchinson triad, these things are very characteristic of late manifestations of congenital syphilis. So this is saddle nose deformity, and you know that there are five grades of saddle nose according to the degree of affection of the nose. Here you can see destruction of the nasal bones. Sorry. Here you can see destruction of the nasal bones uh, with areas of the skin surrounding the bone and this cicatricial tissue or fibrosis and this ectropion of the lower lid and uh, this ulceration, even this tissue becomes ulcerated. It is um, recently ulcerated. Periosteitis of the tibia leads to excessive bone formation on the anterior surface of the tibia, leads to bowing, anterior bowing of the tibia, and we call this separate chin or separate tibia. This is very characteristic manifestation of uh, late uh, congenital syphilis. This is beautiful separate chin, beautiful, this anterior bowing of the tibia. Classic sign of late congenital syphilis is perforation of the hard palate. You know this is gamma. Gamma causes perforation of this hard palate. This also manifestation of uh, late manifestation of congenital syphilis. You may also see frontal bossing and short maxilla. And the liver is severely affected in congenital syphilis. You may see um, fibrosis, and the fibrosis permeates lobules to isolate hepatic cells into small nests, accompanied by the characteristic lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate and vascular changes of syphilis. You know the vascular changes, which is endothelial proliferation in the arthritis obliterans, affection of the blood vessels, weakening of the media, and the adventitia. And this gives rise to a first gen liver, first gen liver in congenital syphilis. Gamma also occur in the liver in early cases. Even in early cases, you may see gamma in the liver, but usually we see it in the late manifestation of congenital syphilis. This is gamma of the heart of a fetus with congenital syphilis. You know, this is the heart. You can see this is the left ventricle. This is uh, the heart. And this is gamma uh, in the heart of uh, infant with congenital syphilis. Rajad, you may see Rajad also uh, as a late manifestation of congenital syphilis. And this beautiful mulberry uh, molars, see? This beautiful mulberry molars, also mulberry molars, these molars, these molars, this is mulberry molars. This you can see in late, as a late manifestation of congenital syphilis. Uh, this to summarize the late manifestations of congenital syphilis. Thank you.